Climate change is already increasing turbulence on flights. This is what is shown by a recent study. What we're looking at here is the Earth Null School jet stream pattern, July 24th, 2019. Now we'll look at it together, and I'll leave a link below for you so you can watch it anytime you want. You can even watch the particulates. You can also watch the CO2 and anything else that it has to show you. All right, here we are of the Atlantic Ocean, and I'll just keep it simple. This is the Earth Null School. I'll keep a link. I'll give you a link. This is a. Uh, you can show various. You can even go back in time, and um, this is the temperature. You can see the difference in temperature. All right, let's leave it at, well, what is that? Okay, all right. What would you like it at? Let's leave it at the temperature. I think that's the best. Uh, ocean? Chemicals? Sulfur dioxide? That help us figure out, it helps us figure out where we had, we had various uh, eruptions as well. Look what's coming out of Hawaii. And uh, Canada, of course, with the mining up there. Okay, particulates. We usually could see this coming from, yeah, the, dust, the African Sahara Desert dust traveling all the way across the Atlantic and even into the Caribbean, even into the United States. And this one here is going all the way up here to the East Coast and also to Europe. We're going to have some African dust in Europe and also there. Okay, let's keep it at temperature. Um, How's that? Okay. And uh, so this is on uh, Science Alert. Andrew Friedman of Washington Post. Turkish Airlines Flight 1 had just 45 minutes left in its eight hour plus journey from Istanbul to New York City on March 10 when the Boeing 777 suddenly shook violently and plunged, injuring passengers and members of the flight crew. The plane made an emergency landing at John F. Kennedy International Airport, New York, where 28 passengers and two crew members were treated for injuries, this is according to news reports. That flight was cruising over Maine when it encountered severe turbulence, known as clear air turbulence because it occurred in clear skies without an obvious visual cue for the pilots. Oh, uh, let me, uh, there's something else going here. Very strange going over London, over England. You can see that right there. How's that? Okay, no cue for the pilots. Such incidents may become more common in the skies above North Atlantic due to changes in the wind shear as a result of human-caused climate change, according to the new study published Wednesday. One of the major causes for clear, avir, a clear air, tur air turbulence is the wind shear, which occurs when winds vary in speed or direction with height. The new study published in the journal Nature magazine is the first to detect a statistically significant increase in vertical wind shear at jet stream altitudes across the North Atlantic. Changes here have been a significant influence on aviation since nearly 3,000 flights cross the pond of the Atlantic Ocean on an average day. The study focuses on the North Atlantic for two main reasons. It's the world's busiest overseas flight corridor, meaning this one here. They go like this, they come back like this, and they go over like this. Okay. 
The study focused on North Atlantic, two main reasons, the world's busiest overseas flight corridor and flights crossing the ocean in this region are typically exposed to the polar jet stream for the duration of their flight, particularly during the winter. The turbulence research focuses on the main driver of mid-latitude jet streams, the temperature difference between the equator and the North Pole, which powers what is known as the thermal wind, equator and the North Pole. In general, the greater the temperature contrast between the equator and the pole, the stronger the jet stream will blow from west to east, from west to east, across the North Atlantic, steering and energizing storm systems along with it. The new study by meteorologists at the University of Reading, that's in England, just about an hour's train ride west from England, from London, find, I know because my son used to go to university there, finds that at higher altitudes, including the lower stratosphere over the pole, temperatures have been declining in response to rapid Arctic climate change. Meanwhile, the upper troposphere above the equator features increasing average temperatures. This means the temperature contrast is increasing at these altitudes. Yet lower down in the troposphere, the opposite is taking place. Temperature changes are weakening and the temperature gradient, uh, the changes are weakening the temperature gradient and are expected to slacken the jet stream. This weakening of the jet stream has received a lot of media attention in recent years. When these two trends are added up, so far they're balancing out, which is why most studies on the tropic only find small shifts in jet stream speeds and location in recent years. But the wind shear associated with the jet stream is clearly increasing, the study finds. Quote, if the jet stream slows down in the lower atmosphere but remains unchanged in the upper atmosphere, then the shear in the upper atmosphere must have increased. This is what study co-author Paul D. Williams said via email. Quote, so although it might sound counterintuitive, there is no mathematical contradiction between having in the upper atmosphere increased wind shear without increased wind speed, end quote. Since airliners cruise in the upper troposphere to lower stratosphere, the study shows that they may be buffeted by greater wind shear in the transition, in the transition zone between the high winds there and the weaker wind speeds just below. The shear itself is driven by the temperature difference at any given level of atmosphere that you're at. This is what the lead author, Simon H. Lee, said in an interview. The study is a step forward because it finds a detectable change in wind shear associated with the North Atlantic upper level jet stream during the 39-year satellite era, rather than simply examining wind speeds as past studies had done. In fact, this study bolsters other recent work that has found a lack of a clear trend in the speed of the polar jet stream at about 34,000 feet since 1979. During the same period, there has been a 15% increase in vertical wind shear at that latitude, the study finds. That altitude, the increase in shear was found in three different data sets of conditions since 1979. Climate models already show two to three times more severe turbulence come the middle of the 21st century. This is what Lee explains. Now what we've done is look at the observations and we find that actually one of the key turbulence drivers has increased. To find something clear cut like 15%, that's why the headline message is that climate change is having a larger impact on the jet than previously thought, Lee says. The focus on shear allows the authors to draw conclusions about turbulence trends, concluding that future transatlantic flights may encounter more clear air turbulence than they are now. They note that climate projections show that the North Atlantic will see a greater increase in clear air turbulence at cruising altitude than anywhere else in the world. This area here more than anywhere else in the world. 
William says the relationship between climate change and increased clear air turbulence is, quote, well established and entirely consistent with our understanding of the physics of turbulence generation, end quote. Judah Cohen, a meteorologist with AER, a very sick company, said the study appears to be consistent with other more recent publications on the topic and considers both impacts of Arctic amplification and upper troposphere tropical warming. Cohen, who was not involved in the new research, said its findings appeared to run counter to other research, recent research showing that the ter thermal wind is declining due to rapid Arctic warming, particularly during the summer months. As for a message to nervous flyers who might not be looking forward to more turbulent skies, such as veterans of that ill-fated Turkish Airlines flight, William says that despite his understanding of what causes turbulence, William says he's right there with them. Quote, turbulence is what I study every day, but that does not make me immune to the fear of flying through it. It seems to grab a very primitive part of your brain and override all your rational thoughts. So although I know that I'm almost certainly safe, I still find it unpleasant, he says. Lee reassuringly reminds people that turbulence is not a typical cause of airplane crashes. Quote, the chances of your plane going down due to turbulence is really nil, end quote. And this is from the Washington Post, and it's on originally, and it's on Science Alert. And I'll give links below for you for that article, and also for Earth Null School. You can uh, play around with whatever you want to see here. Uh, we saw the particulars, we saw the Sahara, let's go to the chem, chem, let's go to uh, CO2, CO2 emissions, CO2 emissions, they also come out of earthquake areas, China of course is full of it, you can understand all their pollution and of course Russia as well, we can see that too. Okay, so you can enjoy playing around with that, and you can also go back in time. Let's go back two days. We'll go back two days. Okay, and well, Russia and China are just about the same. Let's see what's what's happening over Europe, and go and change it again. You can see what's happening. There we go. Something's moving in Europe. Go back. Go back a little bit more. Three hours. Whoa. Okay. Amazing. Hours and days. Well, let's go back a day. Another day, another day. <sighs> What's happening there? Look at that. Oh, amazing. Okay, so you can play around with that. It's fantastic. You can uh, even switch the position of the Earth as to how you see it. Okay. And I'll leave a link below for you for this. And here we have the whole Earth. We can see the everything here panned out for us. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.